a simple direct conversion receiver based on a design by Ono PA2OHH. I've made a few modifications. Unlike most direct conversion receivers, this one is a phasing type, suppressing the opposite sideband. That gives it better selectivity than average. The thing about it though, is it's still very simple, using almost entirely discrete transistors. In this video I'll describe it and then give a demonstration, showing you how good or bad the opposite sideband rejection is. I should mention my receiver is a bit different from that described. Ono's receiver was based on QRSS, receiving ultra slow speed Morse code. The audio from the receiver would go into a computer that would decode it. Ono was able to get good opposite sideband rejection because he was taking the audio out at 9.6 kHz. That was then going into the computer where it could decode QRSS. The opposite sideband rejection was good because only a narrow audio bandwidth was required. That's not the case here. Here I'm taking the signal out as ordinary audio, where you might have between 300 and 3000 Hz. Because I'm using a similar very simple audio phase shift network, there will be differences in the ability of it to reject the opposite sideband across the audio spectrum. Nevertheless, as you'll see on the graph I present later, that is a lot better than no rejection at all, which would be the case if I was using an ordinary direct conversion receiver. To accommodate the audio output, as opposed to the 9kHz output, I've changed a few component values from that presented in the original design. More detail on those later. The whole receiver is spread out on a tray. On the top left you can see the variable capacitor. That is used in conjunction with a 7.2 MHz variable ceramic resonator oscillator to provide coverage of the most used part of the 40 meter amateur band. Not as stable as a crystal, but it's good enough for casual listening. For the audio stage, I'm using a discrete transistor design described in a previous video. That had a bit too much gain, so I've got a series resistor to try and tame it down. There is only one inductor in the entire receiver. That is a 4.7 microhenry RF choke, which in parallel with a 100 picofarad capacitor provides some selectivity on 7 MHz. I've got a few turns of wire wrapped around it to provide signals from the antenna socket. The first two transistors, and I'm using BC548s in all cases, is an RF preamp. The signal from its output is split into two with this simple RF phase shift network. Ono used two fixed resistors and two trimmer capacitors but I was a little bit different, using two fixed capacitors of 47 picofarad and two trimmer resistors of about 470 to 1K. Trim pots are a little bit easier to get and cheaper than trim caps, hence my choice. The purpose of the RF phase shift network is to take the incoming RF from the RF preamp and split it up into two signals, identical but 90 degrees phase different from one another. That goes into a 74HC4066 IC as a mixer. There are four switches in it, but in this case I'm using only two. The RF from the ceramic resonator oscillator 
is amplified and then goes into the 74HC4066. The transistor on the right is the local oscillator at 7 MHz. Then there's a buffer amplifier, the transistor on the left, that boosts its output. That output goes straight into two paralleled sections of the 74HC4066. I should point out there are different arrangements with phasing receivers. Either you can split up the incoming signal into two different signals with different phases, 90 degrees separate, or you can have them in parallel and do the phase shifting and splitting with the signal from the local oscillator. Coming out of the 4066 is a low pass filter. Bearing in mind there are two audio channels, again they are separated by 90 degrees in phase. That then goes to two audio phase shift networks. They are very simple, comprising just one resistor and one capacitor each. That's because they are optimised for use on a single frequency. And that's the limitation. They won't provide an accurate phase shift over a wide frequency range. Therefore, your opposite sideband rejection will vary by frequency. That filtering offers some attenuation, so there's amplification. Again amplifying both channels, one transistor for each. I should point out the collectors of both these transistors are connected together. The audio, now combined, is taken from them. That's now a single signal. But because of the audio and RF phase shifting, the unwanted sideband is more or less cancelled out. Because the audio output level is still low, the signal is fed to another audio amplifier stage before going to the main audio amplifier. That drives the speaker. Here's a demonstration of the rejection of the opposite sideband. We're tuning 7 MHz, around 7.2 or a bit above, so there's some AM shortwave broadcast stations. Now up here, this is the lower sideband. Note it's level and we'll tune through the zero beat and here's the upper side band so the upper side band is still apparent it's not a true single signal receiver that requires a bit more attention to the audio phase shift needs to be even over the entire audio range but as you can hear and we'll tune to the lower sideband again. There's a dramatic attenuation. Very different to a conventional direct conversion receiver where both sidebands would be at the same level. Lower sideband, upper sideband. And there's a spot around zero beat 
where it's about the same level whether it's lower or upper. But especially in the CW receiver, you can sort that out by having some good audio filtering. You don't need to be hearing your low notes for CW. I should mention that AM reception on a phasing direct conversion receiver is a lot easier than one on a direct conversion receiver where there isn't any opposite sideband rejection. Bit of slow scan TV, so we'll get out the mobile phone decoder and see if we can see anything.